A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, written by Mark Twain, is a satirical novel that tells the story of Hank Morgan, a skilled 19th century mechanic from Hartford, Connecticut, who after being hit on the head, wakes up in early medieval England during the time of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Hank, bewildered by his sudden transportation to the past, quickly finds himself captured by one of Arthur's knights, Sir Kay, and taken to Camelot as a prisoner. Due to his strange appearance and unknown gadgets, he's considered a powerful magician and is sentenced to be burned at the stake. Using his quick wit and knowledge from the future, Hank cleverly convinces the people of Camelot that he is indeed a powerful magician by predicting a solar eclipse that he remembers from history. He leverages this event to his advantage, claiming that he caused the eclipse and thus saves himself from execution. Once established as a sorcerer, Hank rises in prominence and becomes the king's primary advisor, assuming the title The Boss. His aim becomes to modernize the medieval society and bring about the ideas and conveniences of the 19th century. He systematically introduces innovations from his time, such as the telegraph, factories, modern education, newspapers, and even advertisements, attempting to lay the groundwork for a democratic and enlightened society. During his endeavors, Hank falls in love with a woman named Sandy. Though initially he finds her fairy tale like talk annoying, they grow closer as they adventure together, like when they rescue damsels or when Sandy gives birth to their child, whom they name Hello Central, a reference to telephone operators of Hank's time. Despite Hank's efforts to improve the state of society in King Arthur's England, he consistently faces the entrenched power of the church and nobility. His actions destabilize the traditional power structure and create conflict with Merlin, the famed wizard of Arthurian legend, who is revealed as a charlatan in contrast to Hank's real magic, his future knowledge and engineering skills. Hank's endeavors reach a critical point when he attempts to curtail the power of the church and the knights, leading to rebellion and war. He believes that if the masses embrace his modern ideals and innovations, they will support him against the elite. Yet, the church declares Hank's works to be the result of witchcraft, and this results in the people turning against him. The ultimate clash between medieval superstition and modern technology occurs when Hank creates a fenced stronghold at a cave, outfitting it with electric wire and equipping his small band of followers with technology-based weaponry like revolvers and explosives. The Knights of the Round Table, along with their vast armies, launch an attack on Hank's position. In a scene that embodies both Twain's dark humor and a critique of technology's potential for destruction, Hank and his men decimate the Arthurian forces with their superior firepower. However, victory is short-lived. In the aftermath of the battle, Hank discovers that many of his men, including King Arthur, whom he had disguised as a common man to show him the true state of his kingdom, have died from infections contracted from tending to the wounded knights. The tale takes a tragic turn as a deadly epidemic breaks out, and it becomes clear that medieval society lacks the medical understanding necessary to combat the spread of disease, effectively wiping out a massive portion of the population. Realizing that all his work to reform this society is in ruins and his vision unrealized, Hank falls ill and slips into unconsciousness. When he awakes, he is back in his own time, having apparently dreamt his entire adventure, or so it seems until he meets a man who resembles Sir Boss, one of Hank's titles in Camelot, and who recounts a legend of a man like Hank who once visited and transformed King Arthur's court. Twain's novel is not only a humorous fantasy, but also a deep social commentary that uses the contrast of past and present to critique the romantic idealization of chivalry, the ignorance of the masses held back by institutional powers, and the notion of progress. The ending suggests that social and technological advancements alone cannot usher in a utopia without a corresponding development in human compassion and ethical responsibility. In a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court, Twain engages with themes such as the struggle between science and superstition, the effects of industrialization, the absurdities and cruelties of Arthurian and contemporary society, and the question of whether human nature can ever truly evolve. Throughout the novel, Twain's unmistakable wit and critical eye offer both entertainment 
and a thought-provoking challenge to his readers' assumptions about history, progress, and civilization itself. 